I mean, I've lived in LA for 16 years, and traffic has gone from like just like seventh level of hell to like the eighth level of hell, and you know it's terrible. Um, finally, 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 there's something, something that I think could solve the goddamn traffic problem. Uh, the thing is, like, uh, why tunnels? Uh, you know, sometimes people say, "What about like flying cars and all these other things?" Um, I want to be clear. We're not opposed to mass transit. We think mass transit is fine. Like, let, let's try every solution possible. But the thing about tunnels is that you can go 3D underground. The, the, the inherent problem with the way cities are constructed is that you've got all these tall buildings that are in 3D and then a road network in 2D. Necessarily, this will result in traffic. There's no way, no two ways around, no way around it. You have to make transport 3D. You, you could go with a flying car, but there, there are some drawbacks to flying cars. They, they are, um, essentially, it's a helicopter with wheels. Uh, and they, they make a lot of noise, there's a lot of wind force, uh, and the probability of something falling on your head if, if there are a bunch of flying cars around is much higher than if there are not. The great thing about tunnels is that there's, there's no limit to how deep you can go. They're weatherproof. That's the other thing about flying cars. If, if there's like snow or, or rain or hurricane or something, suddenly you can't go anywhere. But tunnels are immune to weather. It does not matter if there's a tornado. It doesn't matter if there's like an ice storm. It doesn't matter what's going on above ground. If you're in a tunnel, you're safe and secure. So you will not hear, see, or feel the tunnels being created. You can weave uh, the boring system tunnel network into the fabric of a city without changing the character of the city. It, it, it can, you'll have this revolutionary transport system and your city will still feel like your city. So what's the problem with tunnels? They're, they usually take a very long time to build and they're very expensive. It can cost up to a billion dollars per mile. Um, in fact, uh, the, the LA subway extension that just got completed uh, cost two billion dollars for two and a half miles. So clearly something needs to be done to revolutionize tunneling technology. Uh, we need to be able to build tunnels way faster, uh, and for a hell of a lot less money. This is our snail. This is Gar Gary the Sixth. <laughs> yeah. It, it turns out snails uh, don't live that long. So <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is Gary the Sixth. <laughs> what are we doing to increase uh, the speed of, of tunneling? In a given hour of tunneling, only about 10 minutes of the hour is spent actually digging then the other 50 minutes are spent erecting the, re the tunnel reinforcements, laying down tracks, doing logistics, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so just, just automating the segment placement um, and solving the logistics issues will actually give you about a five-fold increase in, in tunneling speed. W with our design, we've also tripled the power of the drill. That, that results in a, in, in a theoretical net speed increase of about 15 compared to the next best tunneling machine. So, and hopefully we'll beat our snail. So aspirationally, we should be slightly faster than a snail after doing those things. Um, and and we, we have three, three tunnel products. Um, one is the loop that uh, uh, is for uh, transportation pods, um, and you guys will try it out later today. Um, and that's, uh, that, that's a transport tunnel. Um, we're also seeing a lot of interest in just utility tunnels where a municipality can, can get a big tunnel and then put uh, water mains and electricity lines inside the tunnel and then uh, they can actually service, like if they had a, a water main break, instead of it flooding uh, the, the main street in the city, they can actually go in and in, into the, the boring company tunnel and fix the water main. This, but this fundamentally is what we're trying to solve. You'll, you've, we've all been there many, many times. We must solve, solve, solve the soul-destroying traffic situation. So the, the, the loop that we're talking about it consists of autonomous electric vehicles, the combination of autonomous electric vehicles uh, with a deployable uh, guide wheels uh, so that uh, it braces itself against the side of the tunnel so that it's safe even if the car loses power or even if somebody, somebody goes crazy uh, or there's like a mechanical failure. Those guide wheels keep the car centered in the tunnel and ensure that you can go through the tunnel very fast um, and still be safe. But the thing about going 3D is that you could have like three, you could have six, you could have 16 tunnels going in the same direction. So you can have as many tunnels as you want, 
And I'm pretty sure everyone in the United States is not going to move to LA. But you could literally build enough tunnels to transport everyone in the United States in LA. There is no limit. The, the way the loop would work is that you'd have, you'd have main arteries that are traveling at 150 miles an hour, and only when you want to go to, to an exit would you have an off-ramp. It's like a 3D highway system underground, basically. And, and for the elevators, the, the way we're doing the elevators is we're, we construct them off-site. So the elevators are prefabricated, uh, self-contained steel structures. Um, and so, so the, it, when, in order to insert the elevator, all you do is dig a hole in the ground real fast, then bring the prefabricated elevator in sections, drop it down, uh, connect the sections, and you're done. There's not like some extended uh, construction project. But I think that's also important, so that you don't have these like construction projects that disrupt the city all over the place. And, and this, I should say also, we will have continuously uh, operating uh, cars in, in the loop for those that do not have a car. So this will be, we'll actually give priority to pedestrians and cyclists um, with, with cars that are continuously circulating in the loop. So even if you don't have a car, you can still use the system. This is, I really want to emphasize that. A small but very important um, element is having a retractable wheels uh, that uh, when, you, when you're driving down the road normally, they retract and go under the car, you don't even see them. But when you get into the tunnel, they deploy and allow you to go through a narrow tunnel very quickly and effectively like, like a little train. So this, this uh, even though it's like a small thing, it's a small but very important element of the technology. This, this is not intended to be some sort of walled garden or, or just for Teslas or something like that. Any autonomous uh, EV can be outfitted with these guide wheels. Yeah, and why autonomous? Well, it, it means you can go very, very fast and brake very quickly. Like we expect that you can probably do uh, one vehicle per second through the tunnel. Um, typically on, on, a, on a freeway you can do, without autonomous vehicles, you can do a, a car every two seconds. But with autonomy, we think you can do a car at least every, every second. I mean, you can think of these like, they're sort of like wormholes. It, it like, it's just like you drop down the worm, like you're, you're driving around, oh, I need to get to the other side of LA or New York or whatever, drop down the wormhole, phew, pop out the other side. Um, and then you can just drive normally. Uh, the elevator itself only takes as much as two parking spaces on the street. So if, if you can you just have a station in exchange for two parking spaces. And that's what I mean, that's, that's basically the size of a, of a station. So you can, you can interleave these stations throughout, the, throughout cities, wherever there's a, um, you know, a couple parking spaces um, or a little patch of road, pretty much anywhere. You can actually even have them come up in underground garages. And then one day it will connect to the Hyperloop. But uh, that's uh, for another time. <laughs> And I mean, what, what, what I think this really amounts to is, is an actual solution to the soul-crushing burden of traffic. This is, uh, this is something that I think will, will actually work. It's scalable, um, and we have a demonstration tunnel here, and we, we expect to expand this over time to many cities all around the world um, and, uh, and give people more time for their friends and family. So, all right, company. So. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>